What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys for joining me, as always, for another video. In this video, I will be touching on my favorite plays for this NASCAR race at the Blue Emu 500, which is a stupid name, but I'm still going to do it. All right, good luck. Um, I want to go ahead and announce that in the beginning. Good luck. I hope everybody avoids a crash and everything goes well for you. But let's go ahead and get straight into it, all right? Now, first things first. The first thing I noticed when I started looking into this slate is Jimmy Johnson's being only, being, not only, being 12-5. The only way I'm passing, uh, I'm playing Jimmy Johnson is if news comes out that he gets a free pass to the front and nobody's allowed to pass him. All right, that's it. That's the only way I'm playing Jimmy Johnson at 12-5. That's ridiculous. The dude who's like the best driver in NASCAR by a large margin, Kevin Harvick, is only 11-2. And you're telling me Jimmy Johnson, who's 60 years old, is 12-5? It's ridiculous. So that's the first thing I want to point out. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about my favorite guys in general. All right, let's start off with Brad Keselowski. All right, Brad is starting sixth in this race. I love the situation for him at Martinsville. He has raced there 14 times. Nine of those have been top fives. He averages 10th or better at this track. Short tracks in general, he averages 12th or better. He is amazing. Vegas odds have him one of the better odds to win this race, and I completely agree. I think Brad Keselowski is going to get the W this weekend. I called Kevin Harvick last week. Uh, not this weekend, this week. Uh, I called Kevin Harvick last week. I'm calling Brad, Ke Brad Keselowski, and we're going to make it back-to-back, -back, getting it right. But Keselowski, 9-5 just seems a little too cheap for him. I mean, he's been pretty damn consistent, and especially at short tracks and Martinsville in general, he has had a great history there. All right. Next, guys, I want to talk about kind of – first things I want to talk about is the guys who are just kind of point per value seem too cheap. All right. Next guy I want to talk about is Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney's starting at the pole position, so we're not going to get that points differential part of it. But at 8-4, it just seems too cheap for a dude who averages 12th or better here. Um, he's got three top 10s out of eight tries. Like he is a, a top, sorry, three top fives out of eight tries. He's just a solid contributor, and he's going to have a solid outcome as long as he does not crash. At 8-4, I really like him as an option. Um, I wanted to make sure I mentioned him. Um, some cheaper guys, let's go down. Um, I actually had this dude last week, didn't pan out to be too great for me, but Michael McDowell. Now, I'm not entering this in for no, I'm not like making a lineup or anything. I'm just literally just putting him in here because I'm talking about him. Let's go ahead and put that. Okay, McDowell is a guy at only 5'1". He's just really, really cheap. He's qualified at the back. Okay, well, they didn't really do any qualifying, but he's starting at the back, and that gives him some pa uh, pass differential, and he's a solid option as a value guy on this slate if you want to take that. Um, I'm kind of tired of playing Eric Jones. Eric Jones, 6'5", does seem cheap, but he's just uh, super, super up and down. A another guy I want to talk about <coughs> is Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon will be starting in 22nd. He's had a solid year this year overall. Okay, He's also finished 18th or better out of the 12 tries he's raced here. He's averaging 18th or better at this track. He qualified 22nd, so I'm expecting him to get up there near the 10th. Uh, probably, you know, if I had to guess, 10th through 12th is where I could see him finishing. There's a possibility of him finishing. And he's just solid overall at short tracks. I mean, he's raced 37 times at short tracks in general, and he averages 18th or better. So he's just a solid dude, a uh, solid option. At only 6'1", he seems like a solid value play as well. Anybody else I want to bring up as, like, cheap value? Cole Custer, maybe, but I would rather Michael McDowell. All right, now let's go back up and talk about these other guys. Now, let's talk about Kevin Harvick. All right, Harvick is 11-2. All right, he is cheaper than Chase Elliott. That is ridiculous. Kevin Harvick's kind of like, how do I put this in perspective? Kevin Harvick's pretty much like almost 
a play every single week and then you figure out the rest. Like the dude comes to top five every single race, it seems like, and has that upside for a ton of points if he if he wins the race. Um, he has also been fairly solid here at Martinsville. He's qualifying at 10th. I could see him ending top five. 11-2, I mean, when it comes to cash games, there's nothing safer than Kevin Harvick. So if you're sticking in single-entry double-ups, play Kevin Harvick and figure it out, all right, because he's a solid option at any time. I still do like Brad Keselowski, Blaney, better as value. Speaking of the guys in the 9K range, Joey Logano is also an option at 9-9. He has raced at Martinsville 14 times. He's got five top fives, eight top tens, one win here, and he averages 12th or better. Also, um, just like Brad Keselowski, he's done very good on short tracks as well for Logano. He averages 10th or better. He's got five wins and 43 races at short tracks. So it's a great situation for Logano at 9-9. He's a solid option as well. Um, we've got Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch has been super, super consistent lately. He hasn't had the best track record. He's only averages 19th or better at Martinsville. Um, he, but he does have a win here. Um, he's a decent option at 9-2, but I'd still rather like, I'm about to talk about another guy, Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer is also a solid option in this race. I really like him here. Um, he's just a solid contributor at short tracks, 13th or better on average at short tracks. So Clint Boyer is an option at 8-6. Who else? I already talked about Michael McDowell, Austin Dillon as value. What else we got? Oh, okay. I want to talk about one of my favorite drivers, actually. Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch, like Brad Keselowski, has a chance to win this race. Now, I'm putting, I'm going to go ahead and say Brad Keselowski, but I would not be surprised also to see Kyle Busch be able to win this race as well. All right. He hasn't gotten a win in a while, but he's been up there in the top five outside of the race in Charlotte where he finished 29th. Um, this is just a solid situation for him, man. When we talk about history, Kyle Busch is that guy. He's raced at Martinsville 13 times. He's got two wins, nine top fives. When you race somewhere 13 times, you have nine top fives and two wins, then you are ridiculously good. Okay, instead of paying for Harvick, I prefer going down and saving $1,000 and going Kyle Busch, almost $1,000 and going Kyle Busch. He averages sixth or better in 13 races here. The dude's an absolute monster. Vegas odds love him to be right up there with them, him and Kislowski to be battling. I believe he might have the best odds to win this race. I'm not 100%, but I do believe he's up there in Vegas odds as well. Kyle Busch is my guy. When it comes to top spins, this is my guy. I'm not going to be playing the Jimmy Johnson or Denny Hamlin or Chase Elliott. I'm going Kevin Harvick, Truex, Kyle Busch if it comes to spending up. You know what I'm saying? But then after that, there's a lot of 9K guys that are solid, a few 8K guys that we really like, and then we've got the Michael McDowells. We've got the Austin Dillons. Those guys are also solid options as well. Let me make sure that I have talked about everybody I want to talk about. I mentioned briefly Martin Truex. Uh, Martin Truex came out and finished third in last week's race in Atlanta. That was great because he had just kind of stunk it up at Bristol, finishing 20th. But at 10-3... I would rather just go Kyle Busch, and most likely you're not going to get both of these dudes, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about uh, Martin Truex. I'm going to stick with Kyle Busch. Um, like I said, Jimmy Johnson's kind of unplayable for me at 12.5. I don't care. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. That price is ridiculous. Anybody that I haven't talked about, Ryan Newman, I've been playing a lot of lately just solely off the fact that through his career, he's been just a solid contributor in general as long as he stays from getting in wrecks. At Martinsville, he averages 16th or better. He's had six top 10s in 14 races here. He's also 14th or better at short tracks on average. So Ryan Newman is a solid value option at 6'8 as well. If you land on that remaining, you can do worse than Ryan Newman. Um, Michael McDowell is probably my favorite overall value play at 5-1 once again um, at Martinsville. He's just, I mean, he's solid. At 5-1, he's just a little too solid not to consider him at least. All right, I mean, we don't need much. If we get 30 or more out of him, we'll take it. You know what I mean? So Michael McDowell, what else? That's about it when it comes to the guys that I have in play. So let's go over briefly what we have talked about. Now, my core. All right, let me lock my core in. Brad Keselowski, 
Kyle Busch, and then obviously I need to put a value play in. I will go ahead and go Austin Dillon. All right, I'll go Austin Dillon at 6'1". I like him starting at 22nd. Should be able to work his way up. And like I said, I'm predicting him to finish about 12th or better. So it should be a good day for him and be solid return at 6'1". And only 1,000 more than uh, McDowell. It feels like less of a risk, you know what I mean, when it comes to the value. But like I said, don't sleep on McDowell. The only reason Dillon is in this core is because you're going to need a value, and this is the value that I would go with. Okay, I would go with Austin Dillon when it comes to value-wise um, at this price range. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and briefly just go back over and cover what we got here. Here's what we got. Let me go back down. What did I do? Okay, there we go. All right, anyway. Sorry, I'm screwing up right now. All right, Jimmy Johnson, in my opinion, unplayable. Uh, his ownership will probably be low. If his ownership is high, then there's just a lot of stupid people playing this. Um, he, if he wins, look, don't crucify me if he wins, okay? But at the end of the day, Jimmy Johnson at 12-5. I mean, there's just no reason for that, all right? Plain and simple. Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, I've already talked about. I'm not going to be going any of those three guys, okay? The spend-up that I'm starting at considering is Kevin Harvick at 11-2. I'm okay with Martin Truex. I mean, I'm okay with it, okay? Because I like Kyle Busch more. I like Brad Keselowski right around there too, so there's really no reason for Truex. So the guys that are playable, in my opinion, my like group of drivers that I'm going to bunch together and pick from is as follows. Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, Clint Boyer, um, Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Joey Logano, all right, those are the main guys. Um, I do think that Bell is interesting, but his price did rise up to 8-2. I'm not really wanting to pl play that too much. Um, and that's about it, man. I've touched on pretty much everybody that you really need to consider. I mean, when it comes to value, Austin Dillon is my guy. Michael McDowell, if you want to go that route, if you want to go D Austin Dillon and McDowell to really get some big dogs in there, I um, I understand it. Um, and that's about it. Thank you guys for joining me as always, man. Good luck. Greenlightdfs.com. Join the squad as always. I will also be putting um, uh, the Patreon link down in the description if you want to join the Patreon link for the esports and projections and all that good stuff too. All right. Thank you guys for joining me as always, and I'm out. Peace.